So in this video, guys, we're going to talk about how to build wealth in Ghana, how to properly plan to move to Ghana and actually survive, right? Because a lot of people come here and they just don't make it. Well, we're going to look at a couple of things, right? Um, I have a young client. As a matter of fact, I have two young clients. These guys are in the university and they bought land. One of them has actually proceeded to go with his design. Now, this guy has big vision, right? His vision is so huge. Right, he want to build a house as of now that's going to cost him about five hundred thousand dollars. The house looks like a mansion, but you know, he's not balling now. But this guy can be building for the next 20 years, right? Because he doesn't, he's not planning on moving to Ghana. You don't have to have plans of moving to Ghana, so he's not in a rush to finish the house. He can use it as his wealth building vehicle, right? Or you can just buy the land and wallet as your wealth building vehicle because this guy is 19 he's got a long run for this thing to appreciate in value and as he get into the workforce because both of them are actually in school i love using this example because that is how you know wealthy people use this start right the easiest way to actually get wealthy and predictable is by using the power of compounding to your interest and what i mean by using the power of compounding is you need time on your hand, right? The power of compounding works with time. The longer you are in the game, it's like a snowball, the bigger it gets. So he's starting at 19. He can just contribute $10,000 to his project every year. And you just never know. By the time he's 40, he's got a huge mansion. And his peers are going to look at him like, how did he do that? It's because he started from the age of 19, right? So usually, as the saying goes, the best time to start was, you know, about 20 years ago. The best, the second best time to start is now. When you plan on moving to Ghana or you plan on retiring to come to Ghana, owning your house is absolutely imperative. And that's why our parents will build houses in Africa or Ghana, wherever. It's, it's a common thing, right? They hustle, they build a house. And because they are hustling, they don't come to live in the house and let family members live in it and stuff like that. And people think, you know, they are stupid, but it's not the case. They just wanted to build a house for themselves, and they are kind enough to let people live in it. And when the time comes, they will come and, what, live in it. But it's even more better when you build it and move in it right away, like I did. Or you just take your time so you don't even feel like you're building a house, right? So people say, oh, people, when people are building in Ghana, it takes them so long to finish. It actually makes sense because if I wasn't planning on moving to Ghana... And I know I'm going to retire in Ghana. I'm going to buy the land, right? Let's say I am 20 years old. I know by the time I'm 50 years, I want to move to Ghana. I have 30 years. I'm not going to go and buy my land at East Legon. Why would I do that? I'm going to come to Afenia where I have land available for you. If you're interested, you know, less than $5,000, I can get you a product land. I have plenty of land available in Afenia and Pram Pram. Okay, so you buy land in a place like this, you only need like five years for it to be developed to where you actually like, where people are living around you. So if you have time on your hand, it's actually cheaper to jump in a game like how I did. Right? When I was 21, I bought a piece of land for $5,000 at where my house is built now. When I bought it, it was bare land and... Five years later, I decided to move to Ghana because you just never know. Moving to Ghana was never part of my paradigm. It wasn't something I thought of. It just happened, right? And I had to come back. Now that I was forced to come back, it was an opportunity that I saw here that I need to come back. And I didn't have to go and look for land that's so expensive because people are already developed around me. So you can buy land for the sake of just not knowing. And buying land, you can never lose if you buy it right. Land is always going to appreciate in value. We are not creating more of it. The population is growing day by day. So in economics, it's supply and demand. And the supply is fixed, but the demand keeps rising. So what happens to the price? It goes up. This is economic 101. So investing in Ghana is now a waste of money. While well, some people may rush it and make mistakes here and there, but in the long run, it actually makes sense. Now, look, let's look at somebody living in the West and somebody living in Ghana, and both of them want to, you know, own their house. Living in the West, there's actually a whole debate on is it worth it to buy a house? Because most people, about 98% of the population, are buying their house on loan. But even if you have the cash to buy it, you know, 
therefore bypassing all the interest rates like most people do in Africa, then you still have to pay these property taxes. You still have to pay the state tax and all this stuff on the property. So you're always going to have to pay something on that property. So people look at the math and they say, well, I'm better off renting. It's a whole argument in the West about does it make sense for me to even buy this at all because you can finish paying it off and you still have to pay all these crazy bills every month. Therefore, some people find it cheaper if they rent and they are more flexible because they can just get up and leave. Right? When you buy a house, you're basically tying yourself down to it. Yes, you can turn around and sell it, but it's not so easy to sell it. Even in America, it's going to take some time. This is the reality in the West. Africa, is not, it's no debate on it, right? Because once you own your house here, you absolutely own it, right? Though there is some, you know, some implications that you do have to pay some sort of taxes on the house, it's not much, right? And it's not heavily enforced, but it's not much. Like, it doesn't even make a dent in your pocket. Like, you don't care. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, if you do plan on retiring in Ghana, if you do plan on moving to Ghana, owning your property is the best and easiest way for you to you know, do that and actually become super wealthy. So let me paint a picture to you. You can easily retire on $200,000 cash in Ghana if you have your house built. You don't have to work a day in your life again. What do I mean by that? As we are all aware, right? You can easily put that $200,000 into a lot of other things that will easily bring you 8 to 10%. And you put it somewhere that's generating you eight to ten percent every year. If it's ten percent, you are making you know you are making twenty k every year. If it's eight percent, you are making sixteen thousand dollars every year. Now that's a lot of money in Ghana if you own your house. If you don't own your house, you probably cannot survive on that, or you can live modestly actually and still be all right. But I advocate that people should own their house in Ghana because it's quite easy to have a very rich and stress-free life if you do own it. You guys, I cannot put into words how much stress you just don't have to deal with by owning your house in Ghana. You have no idea. Now, I pay about less than $30 in my house expenses a month. What's that? My house is newly built, so I don't have a lot of issues like house maintenance. I might pay to my house every other year. Or once a year, even if I want to, it doesn't really count. Right? If I can, I can pay the whole house with well, like two thousand dollars for the year, right? But I don't have to, unless I want to be fancy. But on the monthly, if I don't have it, I don't have to pay my house. Nobody's gonna kill me. I can, I can sit in the house for five years if I don't have it. That's the beauty. You have options and you have the choice. But my mandatory expenses, which is my electricity and water, I spend about $15 on electricity a month. Yes, 15 on this big house because I have solar panels. And my house water bill is relatively cheap. I've spent less than $15 yet again on water every single month. Now the rest is, you know, eating and I want to be fancy enough to house, have a house help and, you know, people that I actually employ because I like to give back to the community. They get something to eat as well. But if I don't have it, I can fire all of them and I can easily live on $500 if I want to. Worst case scenario. I know that. And it's not like I'm starving. I'm living a very, you know, nice life, probably better than a lot of you guys in the West on $500 because I do what? Own my house. Now, that's the beauty. My fellow Africans, brothers and sisters that, you know, went to America, UK and all that, seeking for the greener pastures. A lot of people, a lot of you guys don't like being there. That's the truth. You don't like being there. You are there because of the money. Now, if you like being there, great. Now, you, not everybody has to move back to Ghana, but you do have to do something. Why am I saying that? You do have to do something because if you don't, then uh, you are a hypocrite. Why am I saying that? Well, when you are living in Ghana, you say Ghana is so tough that you are looking for an opportunity and therefore what you packed up your bags you took your talents away and you left. You left the people behind and you went to what? find greener pastures. Now you did find the greener pastures. You know how it is down here. That's why you got up and you left. So now that you have money, why don't you set up something? If you, if you have no inclination of moving to Ghana or Africa, wherever you're from, why don't you set something like a business? I'm giving you practical examples here. I spent about $120,000 on my car wash. I'm employing about 10 people on a car wash. They got their daily bread. The beautiful thing is, I'm actually making money. 
So the 10% that I told you guys about with the $200,000 that you could put in a, you know, a high yield savings account, whatever, and get that 8%, 10% stocks, you know, dividends. However, if you leave the money just sitting somewhere and bring you the returns, there's actually no fulfillment in that, but at least you can come to Ghana and try to do something, right? Or Africa, wherever you're from, and try to do something. The better way is to invest in something that is giving you more returns or the same return, but other people are eating from it. It's not just sitting somewhere, right? So that is the situation that I'm presenting to you guys. If you don't plan on coming to Ghana because you like... The system outside, I completely agree. It's less stressful for a lot of people. But if things are working out well for you and you knew how terrible it was down here, that's why you left. Why don't you invest back here and employ 10 or 5 people? You're making a change. You're making a bigger change than you think. For a lot of us that, you know, got up and picked up our bags and left, if you would have invested back home, like my father, for example, he's not in Ghana yet, but he is coming to retire in Ghana. In the course of doing so, he's built multiple projects right? Um, some of them for rental, you know, uh, family houses here and there. He's always constantly investing in the country. He has a uh, construction materials business where he's employing about 12 people. He has a water, the Sacha water, where he's employing about 20 people. These people are eating because he brought his money back home. So what are you doing buying that Gucci belt and the Louis Vuitton? What are you doing by being, you know, swamped up with the system, paying bills and being on the rat race and going in circles, sweating, now, if you are barely making ends meet, then I got to ask you, did you fail? You were going for the greener pastures. Have you found it? Some of us do want to move back like myself. We are tired. We are tired. I don't tell you guys a lot of stories, but I've really had my fair share in America. I don't hate America by any means. I love it. They gave me the opportunity and insight, and it made me who I am today. But there are some BS that I had to deal with while I was down there. A uh, few being, you know, police situations where I was at gunpoint twice. Scary stuff, right? I was at gunpoint twice in America. And the, a couple of other stuff that I don't really care about. But there's one, one particular thing that really stuck with me. And I didn't come to Ghana because of any of these. Like, I was doing really well in America. Like, none of these stopped me. Except the police situation could have ended up my last breath, right? It's quite sad. So there you have it. Only your home in Ghana and Africa at large is the real deal because you can easily, easily attain financial independence. Now, financial independence is basically being able to sustain yourself without needing anybody. Now, if you're in the West, you need a lot of money to attain that. Some people need about three or four million dollars to attain that, especially if you are younger. But if you are in Africa like myself right now, I can basically just be a bum and be lazy. And I have attained my financial independence. I do not have to work a day in my life. I don't have to, right? I can just relax comfortably and collect this car wash money, collect this dividend tax money, and collect all this retirement money that I've set up outside. Well, attaining financial independence means that you got money coming in no matter what. The money you have coming in without you working when you spend it, which is your burn rate, it's less than how much you bring in every month. Without working, that is financial independence. It really does not matter how much it is. As long as you can do that and you are happy with that, then you, my friend, are free. And if you are from Africa, you are actually blessed because it's much easier, especially if you do live in the West, to attain this. If you have your head down and you are really trying to go at this, 10 years is all you need in another man's country to attain this. Let me repeat that. I know a lot of people will come for me. But if you have your head down and you really want to get this, all you need is 10 years in another man's country to what attain this as an African. It's a bold statement, but it's very doable. But a lot of us get caught up not making wise decisions. Spending to impress the Joneses, and we forgot that way. We came here to work. My brothers and sisters, Ghana and Africa at large is going to develop with you or without you. Right? You're not doing it. The Chinese and the Lebanese and Indians, they are doing it. And I had this conversation with a couple of people over the weekend. That why is it that the Chinese and the Lebanese and the Indians have no issues at all relocating to the bush to go build a factory and employ people in the villages and live a very simple life. 
and generations to come become really wealthy in Ghana, like what happened to Melcom and a lot of other Chinese companies that's here, you know, they don't care about being the fancy spouse of Accra. They are just different. They will sacrifice for the next generation. But when it comes to us, we are a bit different. When we come back, we think we are so fancy and we want to be in the most, you know, the most lush and posh places. So Ghana is going to develop with you or without you. But how would you feel? I asked this question about two years ago. How would you feel if you abandoned your home country and come back 20 years from now and your landlord is a foreigner and your rent is extremely high? You're complaining. You're complaining that whatever it is, right? But that's what's going to happen if we do not invest here ourselves. When I'm driving, I'm always looking at the cars. And there are a lot of foreigners in this country making a living for themselves. <laughs> this is a whole video for another day. Upon being here myself and setting up a couple of businesses, this is the place to be. If you're a businessman, this is the place to be. Well, it's not easy, but once you figure out a system, this is the place to be. This is the place to be. It's a place that you can easily start something with $10,000 to your name and easily have employees. If I'm in America and I want to start something that is not technology or whatever, like something like the business that I do, I need a lot of money to pay people to begin with. It's not a joke. And you have to actually go through it to do it. It's not a joke. Plus, while doing that, I have rent to pay. So you got to work two, three jobs. It's much harder to pull it off. When you're outside. But when you're here, you built your house, you can come in here, you can have $500 coming every month, you can survive on that. And you probably have $10,000 to your name where you wanna start something small, you can easily hire about two people and set up something for yourself. Now, that's the beauty of Ghana and Africa at large. So, my brothers and sisters, this is the time for you to invest back home. It is absolutely imperative. The world is changing, and Ghana and Africa at large is going to develop with you or without you. And the foreigners are here taking advantage of it. It's developing so fast, my friends. When I left Ghana about, you know, some years ago, Ghana was nowhere close to where it is now. And I've been here for three and a half years now, and I've seen dramatic, dramatic change. To my left and my right of my own house, when you're driving down the street, I see it every day. You can live to go to town and spend a week and come back, and something is different. Somebody built a wall and painted it and plastered it. Like, it's developing, and this is the time to jump in. Even if you don't plan on moving back, look back home, buy some properties, and I know there are a lot of horror stories about, you know, all land scams and all that. What you got to say now? I'm here for you. Proving track record. I'm going to sell you the land and you're not going to have the issues. And there are other people as well now. Things are changing. Things are changing and buying land for less than $5,000 being cheap and all that. In the long run, that's not going to be the same. Especially, especially when everything is well systemized, right? While people are complaining about the chaos in Ghana, I look at it as an opportunity. It's why I was able to create rush in properties, which is a brokerage account for dealing with properties, especially land it's where my specialty is. I then started with a lot of money, but integrity, guaranteeing people back money back, kind of like an insurance thing, having a few, you know, plus that I can cover in case something goes wrong before I jump in. And it's a lucrative business. It's a lucrative business because what? I solve the problem. And when you solve a problem for people, they will pay you for it. I'm solving the land crisis problem, my friend. Wherever you are, I'm sure you are smart. I'm sure you have an idea. I'm sure there are things that you know we can do better down here. And it's going to take you to make that happen. We all have a calling. So just get out of the fear. Do something back home and invest back Hmm. Mm -hmm.